Hey, it's Mike here, and today, vegan collagen products versus animal-based collagen. Which one is better? How do they perform? How do they compare? We have a study on that. We all want super scuppable and we all want supple skin. The question is, are vegans losing out on the extra benefits of animal collagen, as some have suggested. We have some research directly on that, which we can crack open together and decide, but we also have to keep in mind that this is a heavily commercialized industry. There's a lot of beauty aging fear out there that can be capitalized on. And so warning that there's gonna be a lot of industry funded research and we need to keep that in mind. And we have two other side points that we're gonna cover. First of all is a really fascinating microbiome difference in vegans that could play quite a big role here potentially. And then the other is a very recent study that just came out a week ago today, and it is essentially comparing collagen to other proteins for that collagen protein synthesis, which has some fascinating results, which calls some things into question. I'll just say that. Anyway, let's go. Yeah, we're talking about collagen, that building block of many of our cells and organs that allows for elasticity. We're not talking about call a gin, that hotline for calling a gin or a genie to try and grant wishes for eternal beauty. You're all out of wishes, kid. We all want to be a bit younger. Let's get some familiarity with these products. Of course, we have that animal-based collagen, which my OG viewers will know is definitely different different from eating straight bone broth collagen, which is like 900 amino acids long. And of course we can only digest three to five in terms of chains of amino acids known as peptides at a time. Now that's what we're allowing into our bloodstream and that way we don't have giant proteins floating around our bloodstream. But then that led to the industry creating hydrolyzed collagen, which is really what is gonna be virtually every animal-based collagen supplement that you get out there. And this is essentially chopped all the way down into a bunch of smaller peptides, generally between three and 20 chains long, which means you can easily digest them. And just for a rough comparison, the weight illustrates this. We're talking about a whole collagen molecule being about 300 kilodaltons, fun unit, but then they're grinding it down into something between about three and six. And this is where the vegan collagen builders or boosters come in. They can't call themselves collagen directly because they aren't made of animal-based collagen but when you chop down the amino acids so much, you get to the point where plants have those amino acids as well. You know, that's where the animals are getting them from. We're talking about glycine, proline, and then we also have hydroxyproline, which some of these vegan ones might have from yeast as the source. And this is where I just have to say how glycine is king. It is what makes up one third of collagen proteins. It is the single most common one, and it's what boosts growth. And this is is where vegans have a unique microbiome situation going on. Might as well jump into that. You might've heard of the Stanford twin experiment where they essentially randomized pairs of twins into two groups, one on what they called a healthy omnivorous diet and the other group on a vegan diet. So genetics were the same, it was just the diet. And they found that the vegan twins ended up with higher blood levels of glycine, significantly higher, despite consuming a bit less. So genetically identical vegan twins were better at taking up glycine into their bloodstream. How is this even possible? It has to do with that dietary pattern and the result of the microbiome. And that is that these fatty animal products end up favoring a bile-loving bacteria known as Bilophila wadsworthia, which unfortunately, as it breaks down bile acids, it actually eats up glycine, so you can't digest it, you can't have it yourself, and the result is also unfortunately creating hydrogen sulfide, which fuels colorectal cancer, different topic, but worth noting. So just while we're on the topic of glycine, I guess it would just be worth mentioning that given the exact same products, whether they are plant-based or animal-based, to a vegan and a vegan gut, you're gonna end up getting more glycine absorption either way. All right, now we have to get to the question, is it the case that this animal-based hydrolyzed collagen even works? Well, looking at the studies, which again are in industry funded at this point, it does appear from this meta-analysis to help to work on several levels in terms of skin itself. We're talking about increasing skin elasticity, hydration. It also did a bias analysis, which did raise several concerns from many of the studies. And while the meta-analysis wasn't industry funded, research that it looked at generally is. We need to take it with a little bit of a grain of salt or maybe a, a grain of glycine. They do actually sell it in powdered form and essentially little grains. So that's an accurate statement. All right, so now let's get to perhaps the main study at hand, a study that directly compares vegan versus animal-based 
based collagen. And that brings us to this 2024 double blind placebo controlled trial out of Taiwan, which calls it a vegan collagen biomimetic. It's biomimicry. And this is where I should say that there's a ton of different vegan collagen builders with different formulas. They're generally going to have those amino acids in there, but they have extra things added. And even these animal based ones also tend to have extra things added as well, like vitamin C, which we'll get into. But in this case, they used a vegan collagen builder called V Kalal. Yep, calling all vegans V Kalal. And they have what they claim to be an advantage in that they've directly mimic the amino acid ratios of human collagen better than animal-based collagen. So whether you're talking about from a cow or fish or whatever, it has, it has some slight differences. You can see from this chart here, all of them together, if you wanna pause. And I would add that they also have some plant extracts in there as well from Centella. We're talking about Asiaticoside and Ginsinocides, probably butchered those, but these are allegedly able to accelerate collagen synthesis as well. Maybe help with wound recovery as they cite a study on. And here we have three groups. The subjects were randomly divided into those groups. The first was five grams of that animal-based collagen. The next was five grams of that vegan collagen builder. And then they had a placebo. They took it every day for eight weeks and the results were not different between those two collagens from a statistical sense. Now we can see from charts, there might be a fraction of a percentage difference in the advantage or disadvantage for one, it's mixed. Now, for example, the vegan one trended better for skin elasticity, again, not statistically. And here is the collagen density chart at zero, four, and eight weeks for each group, really not notably different, and that's talking about the actual collagen level in that skin. But it of course is important to note that both of them were higher than the placebo. All right, now for a quick break with today's sponsor, Fatty 15, which is a cellular health and longevity supplement that is of course a vegan. And it all started with dolphins. There was a pod of bottlenose dolphins in San Diego, California, where I happen to be visiting right now. And they seem to have age-related issues, metabolic markers that were bad. And they found that they had lower C15 levels than some Florida dolphins that looked a lot healthier. Added C15 to their diet and their blood cell levels went from 0.17 to 0.58, which resolved their anemia, improved metabolic markers, etc. So obviously we aren't dolphins, but we are mammals and we do have cells. And researchers went on to find that in humans, C15 has dozens of cellular benefits across about 10 different cell systems, which is more than omega-3s. And there have been several randomized clinical trials like this one, which found that it increased hemoglobin level, which is amazing. And it's called Fatty 15 because there are 15 pills in this bottle. No, it's because it is made of C15 fatty acids. And in case you're wondering, yes, it is a saturated fat yet, for whatever reason, it has been shown to, in certain cases, even lower cholesterol. I don't know, human body is a mystery. And of course, if you would like to try Fatty15, you can click the link below and go to fatty15.com slash Mike, that's M-I-C, use the code M-I-C for 15% off your first subscription order. All right. And they also snapped a couple of the subjects collagen skin density images over time, this lovely grainy graphic. And the yellow spots represent higher collagen density. So we got that before and after for each, which to me, you know, looks a bit different, but those were probably the best ones they had. And then we have to get to funding, which is really interesting to me because this appears to be an independent study. They did not declare funding, but it's like these studies don't just happen for free. So I'm like, kind of what's going on here? But quote, the authors declare that they have no known competing financial interest or personal relationships that could have appeared to influence the work reported in this paper known and appeared as like such weirdly passive language that it makes me think that something's going on. But maybe it's not. And that company claims that they have another independent study coming out in the future. And they also point to an in vitro, a really petri dish study where they were able to stimulate collagen synthesis with their actual vegan collagen builder mechanistic, whatever. And we actually have a second vegan collagen product study here, however, it was not as high quality. They essentially didn't have any comparison group at all. It was just 66 people given this product called VegCall and they just saw how they did. And they have a wide variety of claimed improvements, everything from hair growth, hair density thickness, to increase in skin smoothness by 50%, decrease in crow's feet, reduced pain. All the subjects' wives who left them came back. But it was, of course, funded by a collagen company in India where it was performed, which, of course, conflict of interest. That doesn't mean it's faked. Again, it's like a yellow flag. And this is where I think another benefit of sort of eating a more plant-based or eating plants at all 
comes in, and that has to do with the vitamin C role here, which is absolutely massive when it comes to building collagen. It's completely essential to build collagen. And scurvy itself really is the loss of the ability to make collagen because vitamin C is so important in that process, allows it to happen. That's, for example, why we have that ex-carnivore doctor who had super low levels of vitamin C and started getting those coiled hairs I've covered in the past. Never I had oranges to bump up the vitamin C, it went away. Well, I wanted to check them and they were 12. Now 12 is actually very low. As well as some straight up scurvy cases on a carnivore diet. Essentially what happens is if you don't have vitamin C, you can't turn that amino acid proline into hydroxyproline and you can't turn lysine into hydroxylysine things that are needed for collagen, and then you end up with sort of dysfunctional, nasty collagen that doesn't work as well. All right, now let's get to that very recent study, which I alluded to that cast a bit of doubt on collagen's efficacy dietarily, but there is nuance, which we'll cover in a sec. So this was a really interesting study because they didn't just give people collagen, they actually had them work out as well. And you might be thinking, oh, well, you know, muscle protein synthesis, which they looked at in general, not as relevant here. But they also looked at collagen protein synthesis, which is of course what we're concerned about here. And so this is quite relevant to the vegan aspect as well because they had their hydrolyzed collagen and then they also had their free amino acids, which reflected a collagen profile, which is essentially a roundabout way of describing what a vegan protein powder is, even though this might not have necessarily been vegan. And the results were that collagen and free amino acid ingestion did not significantly increase muscle connective protein synthesis, so connective tissue collagen, and that was in either the rested leg or the exercised leg. So they essentially had one leg be a placebo. So you're gonna have one chicken leg and the other leg's gonna be ripped for this study. But it is worth mentioning that this was in a healthy young female population. It could vary with older people. And it's again worth mentioning that this was an amino acid profile that mimics collagen so it did have that higher level of glycine proline etc i've seen people claim that this study fully debunks collagen's benefit but also could just be that muscle collagen which has slower turnover is less responsive to diet than skin collagen skin collagen is like a month on average but muscle turnover is like 200 days so the jury is still out so it is worth emphasizing that there really is just a mixed bag of results here virtually none of these studies have even just like a matched protein control where you're just increasing protein. And of course, just increasing protein can increase growth signals, et cetera. I really looked for a while trying to find studies comparing protein to collagen for skin health. I could only find studies like this one, which were on muscle protein synthesis, where pea protein and whey protein were identical, but you know, collagen fails. It's that incomplete amino acid profile. So we need more studies. So this definitely raises some questions. Like how much is it that hydrolyzed collagen in particular, and how much is it just doing something to stimulate this growth. Who knows? We need more research. And this brings me to the question of, do you really need hydrolyzed collagen or some collagen builder to be boosting your collagen? Well, we know it's not necessary to just straight up live, but how about those extra skin gains, joint gains, et cetera, that you might get? Are there perhaps other things that can be done, other nutrients, et cetera, that would lead to the same result? And then we also have a really interesting one, and that is avocados for wrinkles. I just had to throw this in there because, you know, why not? This really is just a pilot study, but it's something that I never would have even considered doing. But then people might think, oh, you know, healthy fats that can help with skin, etc. And they gave people really just an avocado a day. And then they measured things like skin wrinkles, elasticity. And they say, quote, our findings suggest that daily oral avocado consumption may lead to enhanced elasticity and firmness of the facial skin in healthy women. And I went ahead and made a chart of all of their messy data <laughs> of a bunch of different things. Yeah, these three markers definitely improved. And in case you're really concerned with this avocado study, quote, authors declare human ethics approval was not needed for this study. You know, you don't need ethics approval to eat avocados. <laughs> or there was something really unethical going on and they're hiding it. There's only two options. It's also important to remember why people might want <laughs> vegan collagen alternatives. Because collagen itself is absolutely disgusting from an animal. You're literally grinding up like animal tendons and bones and stuff like that. And just other what are really byproducts of the meat industry. But don't get it wrong, even though it is a byproduct, it is a $10 billion industry and still contributes to the profitability of the industry. <clears throat> Ali Tabrizi, Marshmallow Man. So in the end, we've answered some questions. We've raised a few more questions, but it does appear that this vegan collagen builder, biomimetic collagen builder, 
does as well as animal-based collagen. It's able to help with skin elasticity, firmness, et cetera, over placebo, and to the same degree that animal-based collagen did. And we also have that other vegan collagen builder study showing positive results. So we need more research. We need more independent research in this whole field in general, because like 95% of it again is industry funded. So it's you know, probably there's something legit going on, but there's also probably some not as legit things going on. <laughs> and this is where I'll say, we didn't really go deeply into all of the different areas of collagen. We're talking joints, et cetera, but also in terms of arterial health, for example, heart disease is our number one killer and we want to make sure that our artery walls are strong and they're gonna do their job and not get floppy and then lead to, you know, more lesions and stuff like that. And yeah, I do think it's also just fascinating that vegans, because of their microbiome, are able to absorb more glycine. That is perhaps the key point here. Also, that avocados could be beneficial. Love to see more studies as well in terms of wrinkles. And of course, if you do wanna keep those cells strong from another route, you can click the link below and give Fatty15 a try and use my code Mike, M-I-C, to get 15% off your first subscription order. And let me know where you land on all of this. I tried to present a bunch of information and not just say, believe this. So feel free to comment below. And of course, like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.